guys, welcome on into Dreams with Banks. I'm Julie Stewart Banks. Now, my next guest, we never really met in person before until we became friends online, which is very uh, the last 10 years of our lives, I think. That's where all of our friends and friendships sort of bloom from. And then we met one time. But since then, we have just, we've bantered, we've shared stories, we've, we have a mutual respect for being an absolute crazy town person. Uh, and also mutual respect for working hard in the industry. And so I'm very excited to be able to welcome in none other than Sarah Walsh from NFL Network and NFL on Fox. I thought I was never going to get on this show. It is literally the pinnacle of my career. And when you it were should like, be. hey, I just want you to know. Yeah, I know. And you're like, hey, I just want you to know you don't really have to drink at, you know, one in the afternoon, uh, on a, you know, in the middle of the week. That's like, you don't have to do it. And I'm like, why would I get, what, what, what am I getting this out for if I'm not drinking it? Let's be honest. I loved your response. That was a test, of course. Uh, I can, I can just I like you know, sort of decipher. No, I, I'm always like, I don't want people to feel pressured to drink on the show. But I'm always happy when people are are wanting to drink on the show, even though it is Tuesday at 1 p.m., which means it's after any time that would be sort of being um, considered bad. Okay, so what are we drinking here today, Sarah? Um, well, I'm currently living on the beach where I've been living since um, last February. And so I was going to do champagne because, well, why not? But then I was like, I, I'm really leaning into this beach theme and this Florida theme. And now I'm doing the Bucks for the NFL Network. So I'm like, I'm all in on the beach. So I had to go Corona in line. Yes. Okay. And so I'm not using this as a prop for your show, obviously. I also really like that we have Corona light because we're basic bees over here. Um, and yeah. how apropos we are drinking, well, drinking also Coronas during a time of celebration of staying safe. Okay. What are we toasting to with our Coronas? Um, the highlight of my career being on this show, Drinks with Banks. Well, now the you peak of my too, professional too soon. You peak too soon. Okay, toasting to finally getting Miss Walsh on the show. Let's go, baby. Actually, I guess we should have done the whole thingy. What? Mm. I should maybe I should have picked something Canadian since we're both Canadian now too. You know what? The thing about being Canadian is you drink whatever you want. And you drink lots of it, so you are technically Canadian in that <laughs> regard. And you wanted to drink, so. Mm. I was you're right that does taste nice that just hits well that the beach reminds me it takes me back to Cancun I'm not sure how I'd even remember anything from those days but um Sarah okay so tell us you're you're in Tampa you're covering the box you live there now but you lived in Nashville like how's this whole pandemic been for you um yeah so it's really convoluted and honestly like the last three four years of my life when people are like where do you live so we moved back to Nashville. I worked in Nashville at one point. I met my husband in Nashville. He went to Vanderbilt in Nashville. So we go back to Nashville, but then he works in baseball. So during baseball season, um, we would either be in Arizona for spring training for two months, or we would be in Florida for two months. And then we would go to wherever he is team wise, which he's with the Toronto Blue Jays, as you know, which is now why I'm a Canadian. So in the summers, we would go to Canada, which is awesome. And, um, but now because of this whole life falling apart scenario um with the pandemic we have been in florida since spring training like none of it was planned or wow. i mean look our year is like everyone else's year like it just went off the rails um and and we look at it we try to be like how can we make the most out of our situation um and ended up staying down here and it's been great actually um you know because we had we, we have little kids that weren't like cooped up with the cold weather we were able to get them outside and um not do everything normal that you would normally do, but um, being in Florida certainly has helped, I think, with the pandemic situation. Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned that, you know, everyone's going through a lot of this stuff, but you guys have a unique situation. You're working, you have children. Uh, the Blue Jays that your husband is a bullpen coach for were not even in Toronto. They were no. in Buffalo, and it's just like kind of like a yeah. whole hoot and any of the mess. But I want to get to the most important part <laughs> of what you just mentioned, which are your children. Hutton and Breeze, who are just stars of the internet right now. And <laughs> the beginning was when I was so into them, everyone out there who follows her on Instagram, you'll know, you'll know the seasons of Hutton and Breeze is the dirt eating was, was fantastic content. What was up with your kids? Just like obsessively eating dirt all the time. So I didn't, I've never had kids before. I didn't grow up around, like I wasn't one of these like baby people that like I didn't babysit. I, I knew nothing about kids. 
I didn't know how many people are into kids like on social media. And by the way, I used to, I used to be like super private. I put nothing on there. So yeah. I didn't know if I would ever even like share anything about them. And then I did. And people go nuts over them. I don't know if it's because there's two of them. I don't know if it's because they're lunatics. Um, probably maybe a combination of both. But I didn't think it was like a thing. So we had this, um, we had a fiddly fig in our house, our Nash- Nashville house. And they would go, o- it was like a large thing. They would go over there. This is like when they're toddlers and eat the dirt out of it. And like, I caught them once and I'm like, oh my God, like you can't do that. <laughs> and then like, and then I started like filming every time I caught them and I'd be like, what do you do? And they like are startled and they're looking at you and with like, I didn't do it, but there's like dirt, like all running down their mouth, like dirt in their diapers. And um, they would do it all the time. They would do it all the time. And we put like netting over it. Well, this plant, it's like really big and it wasn't cheap. So it's like one of those things where you're like, I'm not getting people like get rid of the plant. I'm like, I'm not getting rid of the plant. I'm going to get rid of them before I get rid of the plant. Like, <laughs> the plant stain. And like we did everything, we put like a, a net over it. Like we've done everything and these little monsters would find a way. And then of course, like my mom is like, who knows what's in that? That's like the fertilizer and they're going to grow like a third arm. Like you better watch it. And they're fine. They're fine. I mean, they've gotten to three and a half, so they're okay, right. but they don't eat the dirt anymore. But for a while they were eating dirt all the time. And, um, I just started filming it and it's crazy. Cause I would put that up and people would go not people. They don't care. Like, you know how, um, everyone on Instagram, like they love people with their sexy swimsuit pictures. Like on my yes. account, all people want is like, show me your kids eating dirt today. And, um, and now it's transitioned into like the new twin hotness on my page is these baby races we started doing. Oh, I um, love those. I the pony was great. <clears throat> Anytime I post them, we have this, this beach house, like they just run in a circle. I mean, they race each other, but they throw hissy fits and I make fun of them. And, um, yeah, I basically make fun of them and they pout when they don't win. And I call it lessons in sportsmanship because it's like the worst lessons in sportsmanship you've ever seen. <laughs> and now all the time people are like, when are you posting another baby race? And I, I, I'm not even making that up. If I post a baby race today, like the, con- like the DMS I get and people will be like, even if it's like, I post a nice picture of myself, someone will be like, Hey, so that, that's a nice picture of you and all, but can you just go back to posting the twins? Like, baby let's get, we like, need, we it. need the kid content big time. They are, Sarah, they are hilarious too. And them owning up to things that they didn't do, did do, calling each other out. Absolutely just prime, prime content. And the fact that it was like, why, but like, why would you be eating dirt? It's still what I would like to know at some point, but we do have to go to break. Uh, we are drinking and thinking here with Sarah Welsh from NFL Network and NFL on Fox. Don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Joy Taylor, and I had drinks with Banks. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Drinks with Banks. I'm Julie Stewart Banks. I'm here with Sarah Walsh from NFL Network, NFL and Fox. We're sipping on a little Corona light. Mm. Hmm. Just sweet, sweet nectar when it hits your lips. Now, speaking of beer, let's get into some of your career stuff you're doing right now, Sarah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you've been killing it. You've been everywhere. You've been doing NFL and Fox and NFL Network, and you're in Tampa. You're like in the precipice of of the ultimate stories of the NFL world with Tom Brady. And we just saw the Saints Bucks game this past week, and it was a stinker. It was that was the only game I cared <laughs> about all day, and it was just like it sucked. Um, at this point in the season, like mid season, pretty much right now. You've watched this team. You've been around them. Like, what? Where are they? Like, how? Uh, what kind of grade would you give them at this point? Well, I think um, do you throw out is like a, back in college when they throw out the like high score and the low score on tests because if that game Sunday doesn't happen, you would think that they would be contending. I mean, there was talk going into the game Sunday night that are they the team to beat in the NFC? Or is this team going to like? really make a run. And one of the linebackers, Shaq Barrett was like, this team is built to win now. I mean, it's sort of this like all-star team that they put together. And then you just throw Antonio Brown into the mist. And when they signed him um, about two weeks ago now, you were like, oh my God, like this team. And then they come out Sunday night. Like, so uh, this sounds really lame. And I don't have a great answer for you. I guess you would give them maybe like a, maybe a B minus and just in the sense of like, they haven't had time together. They really haven't. Um, I am stunned by what happened Sunday night. I think they're mm-hmm. stunned by what happened Sunday night, especially because their defense, what people don't realize that defense has been good for a while. That defense uh, is really good. It, they weren't on Sunday night. 
and that's the most surprising. But they were that good last year. Like I did several of their games a year ago on NFL and Fox when Jameis was quarterback. So there were a ton of turnovers and they lost they lost games that that defense kept them in. So I've I've known that for a while. Like if they could just get the right offensive pieces and they were going to be really good. I just don't have an explanation for what happened on Sunday. The Saints were just better. They were, um, they executed better. They did everything better. They were, their game plan was better. Um, it's, it's hard to tell because they have looked really good at times. And so I I can only think something like that happens. I can only think that it's just, they have not had time, you know, Tom switches teams for the first time in his life. And you've got guys out there trying to get on the same page that had no off season, preseason, all of that stuff. I, I don't know if that's why we saw what happened Sunday, but I'd also have to believe given who Tom is and, and given what he's done, like he's not okay with that. Right. So yeah. he already prepares like a, a crazy maniac, I would assume. And I would assume that that gets stepped up even more. Um, so I would say maybe B minus C get, just because that Sunday thing was such an abomination. Okay. All right. So we've gone down since the teacher started marking our homework here. That usually was yeah. the case for me. Um, there's a they lot of stuff I want to get next week. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, it's like one of those things where I, I don't know. Not, we don't have a great sample size at the moment of what's going on, but it looked very good. You started off the year quite well. Maybe midterms happened. You got went out. You know, you didn't really take it as seriously. Uh, <laughs> but moving on, um, what is uh, right now, whatever bucks aside or in this, what's like your favorite story in the NFL that you are like ah, excited about? Um, I, I mean, it, it, the box. Like, so, okay, I grew up in Tampa. So this is like the one thing my my family followed like our whole life. It's actually, it's funny. It's the first time like I'm, not the first time, but probably the first time like I'm saying something my parents actually care about. Like, I'm like, dad, how great is your life? That like, you know, they would they would watch Sports Center because I was on, but half the time, um, you know, like my, my grandma who's 92 now, she would watch it and like, she didn't care what I'm talking about. She would watch to see like what I was wearing that day kind of thing. But I'm like, dad, how great is it? You turn on the TV and literally the only thing you care to hear someone talk about is the thing like I'm talking about. Like, that's pretty cool. Um, so it's exciting. them. So, so really that, and I think, and especially so for me, because as being someone from Tampa, when I would, was in Bristol back in the day, there's a lot of people there from um, the Northeast area. It would be Yankees, Red Sox. It would mm-hmm. be Patriots giants, um, cowboys, nobody ever cared about Tampa, like nobody. And I was like the lone person there from Tampa. So I'd always be like, Hey, what about, um, the story in Tampa? And everybody's like, get out of here. Like nobody cares. Be like- and, and, and correct. And even, but by the way, even if they were really good, if Tom wasn't here, they still wouldn't care about Tampa. Like Tampa is just not a, a, a place or a team that gets like the national media. Like mm-hmm. it, they just want the Stanley cup here. Like nationally mm-hmm. people, it's just not the market that people care about. So for me, it's sort of like gratifying and awesome yeah. that this city, and I mean, Stanley cup, they just won it. The Rays almost won the world series. And then you had this like rise of, of Tom and Tom's going to be a huge story whether they're good or not. So yeah, um, that is an exciting time to be there covering it and having your parents, you know, get to watch it in that, that regard. My dad, my, my parents have never really gotten to see me do anything that they were interested in. Um, but speaking of, you mentioned (laughs) Bristol and ESPN, except for this, my mom very loves this. She loves, she loves, loves actually she follows you on Instagram. So this is great too. So, um, cause we were discussing your children. I need the followers, you know, (laughs) Uh, but you mentioned Bristol and, you know, obviously, you know, I, that's where I first knew of you when I first moved to the States was you being on sports center. And, and we know, uh, when, when you were part of the 2017 layoffs, which was a really awful sort of situation that you were a part of, they're doing the same thing kind of right now, but you are now, you know, you're crushing it with NFL network and NFL and Fox. How has like, from your perspective right now, how has your, um, uh, your viewpoint on like what happens, like, how do you sort of interpret it from where you are? Um, I don't know. I just think, I know that this is going to be cliche, but like everything happens for a reason. And, um, I grew up in Florida. So like living in the Northeast was never, never going to be my thing. Um, at the time I had been through like a lot, a lot personally. Um, we had, we had been through like a lot of, uh, loss, like having, um, kids and I had gone through a really, really difficult stretch of, um, surgeries and a lot of health problems that nobody knew about that. I very much like kept under wraps. 
Um, and I just had, and I think that this was, you know, looking back the wrong mindset, I think I really thought that working in a male dominated industry, working in a place that was as competitive as it was, like if I let on that anything was ever wrong with me, um, it would be used against me or somehow I would be penalized for that. So I had gone through like a really, really rough stretch of like literally, um, you know, from being on set to having a miscarriage to, you know, being in surgery and then showing up the next day when doctors would be like, you need to, you you can't go work for a week. And I would like get on a plane and go fly. Like I, it was just, and it wasn't even like physically what was so hard. It was more like mentally, like putting on this mask that like everything was okay. And I think eventually like that ends up being really damaging and, and not that I think you need to shout medical problems from the rooftop or anything by that means, but I just, I, I added such a layer of stress to myself of like trying to hide everything, um, that I had gone through literally the ringer and I had had these twins. It was a high risk pregnancy. I hid the fact that it was twins from everyone. I certainly hid it at work because I was afraid that I was honestly afraid if I was like, I have a twin pregnancy, which is high risk right out of the gate that they, I would not travel. So again, like I even, and my husband at the time was like, I, I hid for the most part that I was pregnant. I mean, I got, um, texts and emails after I announced that I had these kids. I, I have one text that I still have saved. That's like, we're so happy you found a surrogate, um, to have these kids. And I'm like, no, I had them. And they're like, what do you mean you had them? And they like scream, grab a picture of me at the national championship, like two weeks before. And they're like, you, you're not pregnant in this picture. And it was like all angle. If you saw me in person, like yeah. I was, but I mean, like I really like worked my ass off to hide things. And, um, and so when I had them, it was honestly such a blessing. And we had gotten through literally like the worst of life for me. And, um, so I was out on maternity leave when those layoffs happened. So it wasn't even like on my radar. Um, I had been told not to worry about it. Like you're not involved in this. I was in Florida at the time because we, they came early so I, um, it was just a whirlwind of life for me at that moment. And so I, I flew back, um, cause I was told to report back to work. Cause my attorney leave was, um, was getting towards the end. I flew back to work and hours after we landed, they called, told me, um, and I was like, okay, how can I handle this the best way? Like I can handle it. And I think, I think just having gone through everything we went through, like on, on losing like babies that I'm like, this isn't the worst thing that's happened to me in life. Like, it's just not like it, it can't be. And if I want to sit here and be super down and upset about it, then like, you're kind of negating things that like really were bad. like, have some perspective on life. Like you have these two babies that, I mean, they were in the NICU and even that was like a little dicey, but like, we're so lucky. So I think that like, when I look back, um, in some ways it could have been like crazy because it's like everything happened. I've never had a kid before. Now I have two. I've never been late. I mean, I put off having these kids for until a lot later in life because of my career. And I think I worked so hard at this career stuff um, and said like nothing else matters. And then you realize like the other stuff, not only does it matter, it matters more because, Mm -hmm. you know, companies like nobody cares about, like it's a company, right? Like they don't care about you the way like family does and friends do and things like that. So I just, I don't know. I think I had like a good perspective. I'd like to think I had a good perspective on it. And, um, and I think going through like what we had gone through made it, um, not hurtful, but like, you just kind of, you realize like, okay, well, like these kids are okay and we're going to be okay. And we're going to figure it out. And somehow it's going to lead you to a path. That's like one door closes, another door is going to open. And and that's sort of how, how we've adjusted. Yeah. Well, you seemingly have a very mature approach to a situation that wasn't handled uh, on the other end in that way. I think uh, considering the situation you were in, when you were told you were laid off just from an outsider's perspective. Um, but you seemingly have also very good advice for people that are going through this right now, not the same situation as you, of course, having come off maternity leave and everything that went into even just being in that situation, but, uh, ESPN seeing, you know, mass cuts as well. Uh, we got to go to a quick break, but, uh, thank you so much again, uh, Sarah, for your honesty on this. We'll have a whole lot more Sarah Walsh on the other side. Hey guys, welcome back to Drinks with Binks. I'm JSB. We've got Sarah Walsh here, who is an honorary Torontonian. This is my necklace that I have here. Okay, Sarah, we don't have a whole <laughs> lot of time. You love Toronto so much. Yeah. Why? Why are you obsessed with 
God's Country and Toronto. <laughs> um, well, when my husband took this job at the Blue Jays, um, I was like, you take the one job out of the country. Like, that's what we're going to do. Like, there's there's one baseball team out of the country and you go there. Across the board, Julie, I'm not kidding. Every person goes, you're going to love Toronto. You're going to love Toronto. Okay, I couldn't be more Florida. I mean, look look at me. I couldn't be more Florida. And I'm like, what about Mrs. Okay. Toronto? But Tor- it's Toronto in the summer. And everyone's like, you're going to die. You're going to love it. They were all right. It is, if for the people that haven't been to Toronto, it is a, I don't know if I can say it's a hidden gem because everyone knew apparently but me. But like when the weather finally turns and I remember stepping off the plane and when the weather turned nice and like, this is the nicest day I've ever experienced. And then it's like that for like three months of like every day is the nicest day. Here's another little Toronto fun fact. Um, It's like New York, but super, super clean. Mm -hmm. And I cannot get over, this is going to be weird. And my husband, Matt is like, okay, get over the landscaping, the flowers and landscaping. And I don't mean in a botanical garden, like all of Toronto is like a botanical garden. Like that you're not walking down the street in New York city. And I mean, what is the landscape budget in Toronto? So down by the water, I bought yeah, it's by real the water, big. We got a real big stadium. landscaping budget. No, oh, it's nice it's that you like, notice this, so, Sarah. I notice these things. It's so pretty. I had girlfriends come up and they're like, "Look at the flowers." I mean, everywhere. I feel like all of Toronto is like in the United States. What we think a botanical garden looks like, like that's just the regular streets. Like, interesting. I have never heard that take before about the six, but I will take it. If, and if you go down, go down by the water, it's like incredible like how pretty it is and i okay. like water so yeah it is it's a great city anyone hasn't visited well we don't have a whole lot of time but sarah said she knows canada better than me and this is the only oh, map i have but it's a pillow <laughs> <laughs> so sarah Wait, I you think, Toronto. i'm john king here all right i know all the counties <laughs> that you guys have in america at this point <laughs> tell me what is what is that province Oh, province. Julie, I literally only know Toronto. And like, it's like, you it's like six Canada. restaurants. In Tor- you said Canada. Toronto <laughs> is Canada. Toronto is You're right. Canada. You know what? I, that's, that's, I never You won this Toronto. competition. Toronto is Canada. It, and that is, <laughs> it's like right there. Actually, that's Quebec. Where are we? Uh, uh, maybe this pillow might be wrong. But yes, Toronto is Canada. We settled it here on the show. Um, guys, we have to take a quick time out. We're going to have a whole lot more, Sarah, when we get back. Hey guys, we've had an awesome time drinking and binking with Sarah Walsh from NFL Fox NFL Network. And I would have loved to ask you what Carissa would have thought of my bookcase back here, but we'll save that for episode. Duh. Where can we find you next, Sarah? Um, so I am leaving the warmth of Florida this weekend to do the Texans at the Browns. I will be in Cleveland on Sunday for the NFL on Fox. And then after that, I'll be back on the Bucks beat uh, there in Carolina, but I'll be in Cleveland and then I'll go back to the Bucks. I don't, I don't, we've like got 15 calendars on our fridge like, to figure out where either one of us is at any given time. But the next thing, I only know just the next thing and I'll be in Cleveland on the NFL on Sunday. Awesome. You are just everywhere. That is a lot of teams to get to know and to follow. So thanks so much for everything here. Make sure you follow us here on Instagram. Yeah, great. Especially the children. They're just a hoot. Um, Sarah Walsh 10 and then Sarah underscore Walsh on Twitter. Make sure that you guys follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube at Fubo Sports. And this is in podcast version, of course, because we do everything here. Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your pods. We will see you guys next week. Bottoms up, bitches. Bitches.